Okay, great. Thank you very much. So Derby is a business development, proposal development, marketing, and partnership solutions. Uh, we are we only we mainly cover the Middle East and North Africa, all Middle East countries, North Africa plus Turkey, uh, plus Turkey as well. Development aid industry is similar to any other industry or any other business. Uh, development in industry any other, in, in order to bid for projects or to win projects in the in the development aid industry you need to understand client needs client wants you need to provide solutions which is in our language in development aid technical approaches and management approaches you need to understand the competitive landscape the competition the value for money as well and you have to have the visibility on marketing that you need so actually development in industry is similar to any other business industry, but the, the difference is the content and the thoughtful ideas or the, uh, the content itself. Development in industry. I, I have to mute all. Development, development aid industry ha, it works in all sustainable development goals, the 17 sustainable development goals. It, it includes multiple sectors from infrastructure, from water, wastewater, from electrical power stations to underground, to transportation, to roads construction, to agriculture, to democratic governance. So it's, it goes to multiple sectors and uh, uh, to multiple, Yes, so to multiple sectors, as well as a range of professional services from monitoring and evaluation, to training and capacity building, to technical assistance, to legal reform, to engineering services. So it's the whole development aid industry is actually covering everything, all development goals uh, and all type of services is needed for development aid industry. However, development and industry, as well as any professional services industry, uh, professional service industries, which is industrial professional service, which, which, which are provided by consulting firms, non governmental organizations, where they manage projects, manage grants, it's a proposal machine industry. It needs a proposal to be written at the end of the day to secure a contract. However, these proposals should be client focused, number one. Two, should be competitive. Three, should be persuasive. And four, should be thoughtful. Client focus means that it should respond to the client requirements and the client needs. Competitive, it should be competitive and technically. I, have, I, mean, I mean that you have differentiators than others, competitive and comparative advantages, and you have to be cost competitive. Persuasive, all what you have to write in your proposal document should be evidenced. So it's writing with evidence, like your previous experience, your awards and achievements that you have acquired. So a lot of marketing material and marketing content is put into the proposal document. Should be thoughtful. You should bring ideas creative ideas and solutions that are evidenced and evidenced and proven that you are telling the client who's gonna give you the money or the contract or the grant that this solution is deliverable, practical, and will end up with the results and the impact that mystery client from early stage who understanding from the client will meet his needs and wants and requirements. So the, the issue usually in business and development and industry, usually people think that proposal writing is an English writing or is an, whatever, is an Arabic language writing. So they think that it's a language writing and someone can make it friendly and nice and a good writer so they can win a proposal or a grant. But this is, yes, it's, it's helpful to be edited and to have a good language and smart language in writing, but this will not bring a proposal. A proposal needs a number of a, a, a number of winning themes that should be integrated into the proposal document to bring a state of art, a story to tell that is 
client-focused, competitive, persuasive, and thoughtful. So the, the, the whole theory, the whole theory is about, uh, the whole theory is about be in the know. It's all about knowledge. So any good proposal, it should be a thoughtful ideas behind it. But what, how can I bring thoughtful ideas? The trick of the game, be knowledgeable. How can I be knowledgeable? And what kind of knowledge I need to be able to win a proposal? So first of all, you have to know your opportunity very well. So you have to relevantly, first should be an opportunity that fits your, require, your organization or your consulting firm or your capacity and competency and expertise as an individual consultant. <coughs> Sorry. You need as well to know, once you know, the, what you, once you know your opportunity, you need to know your client. So you have to check and understand, you have to collect and understand a lot of business intelligence information about your clients, such as clients' funding priorities. Or most importantly, clients' way of thinking and the clients' preferred uh, uh, implementation mechanisms and technical approaches. How can I find such information? Just by skimming the client website. Is it enough? No, it's not enough. So what is, is required more to understand the client? You need to go and skim and skip his previous procurement notices, which is our, a real example of a reflection of the client's funding priorities, which has been translated into procurement notices, which has already a budget is allocated for such procurement notices. Investment is allocated and pledged for such procurement notices. So this is are the real funding priorities and, and, uh, and preferred implementation mechanisms, methodologies, and approaches. So by reading and scanning all of these archives of such procurement notices of such a client, you'll understand more about the client and give a better response that is a client focused. Of course, meeting with the client is important, this is if the RFP is not out, but if the request for a proposal or request for application is out, usually it's called procurement sensitive stage at which you can't usually meet clients. But before the RFP release, you can meet clients. If even you don't have the capacity to meet clients, and even if you didn't meet with the clients and the RFP is out, so under the first step or the first trick is to skim and read their previous procurement notices, the request proposal documents. So it's, the idea is read to lead. You have to understand who, have, who has been in partnership with this client. Who are the partners of this client? Who are the subcontractors of this client? Who are the subgrantees of this client? By understanding who are these, you understand the decision-making skills, the decision-making of the client industry, of the client organization, about from the type of subcontractors they have worked with. By identifying the partners worked with the client, you will be easily identify your potential partners or competitors in this project. Then you need to understand, you need to know your differentiator as the third B in the null. By understanding who are the potential partners or potential competitors, you can, you can hypothetically select three to five competitors which the client has worked with before and in line with, your, in line with the sectors of expertise and type of services requested originally in the request for proposal that you are bidding for. So you start understanding who are these, what they are doing. Then you start listing your competitive and competitive advantages against such potential competing list. So you start writing messages in which you start, in, in, at which you start detailing your differentiators and which makes your proposal more competitive. Still, you need to understand the market, the subject matter expertise of that subject matter expertise of the specific request for proposal. 
you need to check other procurement notices with other donors. Let's, for example, say that you are bidding for a USAID project. In a water or wastewater improvement and hygiene services, maybe USAID approach is going from up bottom, and the request for proposal. You can understand that they are looking for changes in the policy at the regulatory level or at the ministerial level, going down to the school level or at the community level. But as well as you can see, other donor agencies working in the same sector, same services. Let's say UK aid, different or Danish Refugees Council, or international organization like ACTED, or international organization like WORD, or Islamic Bank for Development, or African Bank for Development, on the same sector, same type of services, so you understand how they are implementing their projects. From these ideas of other donor agencies, how they implement, and from understanding your request for proposal, your client, how they want to implement, you can start integrating great ideas into your proposal which makes your approach and implementation mechanisms or methodologies more appropriate more creative and thoughtful bear in mind you don't have to change or to uh, 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 confront or uh, the the, uh, the client's original approach the client's original original approach if it is determined and the request for proposal should be respected. I'm saying, how can we extra have better thoughtful proposals or how can I get, how can I write more with, with better methodologies, better implementation mechanisms, better know-how by seeing other donor agencies in the same area. By this way, be in the know, you know your opportunity very well, which is understanding the request for proposal, then you have to know your client by revising and skimming the previous request for proposals, previous documents, these are valuable documents. Clients spend months preparing that. And then you need to understand your competitive and the comparative advantages and the competition landscape so you can pull it your differentiators. And then you need to know your thoughtful ideas from the market. Then your proposal here will have at least four winning themes. First winning theme is your understanding the client requirements. Second winning theme is understanding the client's needs and wants as if you are, as if you, you, you know how to read their brains, as if you are part of them in their offices. The third winning theme is your differentiators, why you are different, why us, why, what are discriminators that discriminate your proposal from others? The fourth winning theme is your thoughtful approach or mechanism. So four main winning themes. Under each winning or winning themes, you can have sub-themes. Once you lay out all of these themes into your 10 to 15 pages proposal, this is a story to tell. Then it is persuasive. It's client-focused. It's competitive very nicely to tell a story and it is at least par, uh, uh, it will ensure that you're winning to, to, to raise up to 80% winning rate and instead of just writing English language or Arabic language, whatever language document that you, you like how to, that is written, uh, 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 that is written, uh, that is written uh, properly because uh, your proposal is fully integrated. Um, so a business development industry, we, we need something is missing here. The only thing is missing here is your marketing and visibility. Donors, agencies, like any other client, would like to work with those brand names of those who have been able to make their organizations or consulting firms visible. Is it only by having posters or flyers? No. Is it only by marketing fluff? No. 
It's by branding and positioning your organization thoughtfully. This is what is the difference between the development in industry and any other industry. So in order to continue the circle in which you would like, once you have great proposal is written, but you are not visible enough and are not branded in the minds of the decision makers or in the minds of the evaluators of the client agency or the donor agency or the international organization agency, you may reduce your winning probability less than 80%, maybe 60 or 50%. To increase this winning probability up to 80%, in addition to all what I have said before, which is be in the know, you need to be more visible. Okay, how can I be more visible? Being more visible is by, for, by contacting and communicating with the clients. You need to be there. They need to see your face every day. Do they have to see me every day in face and physically? Clients are dispersed in different areas, even the same country, there's a lot of long distances. So they have to see your work more often. How can they see more my work more often? Of course, by attending conferences that the client or personnel are attending, so you connect well. But there also, you have to produce your own communication materials such as best practices, success stories, case studies, and other promotional material. Another one, you can run a hall. Run a hall means you can arrange small conference room to make a small that in which, for instance, you can come up with an idea like towards resilient cities, towards resilient cities, in which your organization is working on how making cities resilient by empowering people, by in participatory planning, by having a better understanding of disaster and risk mitigations. So you, when you run this uh, uh, conference, or most probably now these days, to be more efficient in cost, a webinar. A webinar for that specific methodology, a webinar on that specific success story, then clients or donors will understand you are, started, you are starting to brand and position yourself more strongly, steadily in this area. By repeating these number of webinars, online webinars, conferences, activities, then you are better positioning yourself for the better and the better. Psychologically, as I said before, donors and client organizations would like to get those people who they can believe that they can rely upon or they would like to work with organizations or non-governmental organizations, consulting firms or individual consultants who believe in what they believe. So, and generally, a business development, a proposal writing process, a business development process for donor agencies is similar than any other industry. Start with scouting, identifying clients, identifying opportunities, to engaging, to start meeting and contacting and communicating with the clients and understanding client needs and wants, to positioning by understanding your differentiators and why you are different and putting yourself in the front, I mean, to be more visible, to finally just pull all the information together, do it in a document, a uh, proposal document, and this means that you have a winning proposal. So it's not, winning proposal is not a result of just writing, it's a result of continuous, continuous marketing, data collection, reading, learning process. By this, the, this is the, the last slide I'm, I'm doing now in business development, proposal development, and marketing solutions development industry. I can also show you an example of our Derby website. Uh, Derby website. Uh, it's, it's, it has been built. Uh, that website has been built exactly on this methodology, scout, engage, position, and capture. 
to increase profitability, uh, winning rate, I, th I think so, as well as profitability rate, because you will be able to produce value-driven proposals, value creation proposals, thoughtful ones, Mr. Client, Mr. Donor, multilateral, bilateral, Arab organizations, international organizations, corporate social responsibility will value and pay and pay for it. Accordingly, you will have, and during the proposal process, it will be a meaningful and a challenging process. So this will not be a copy and paste. And it will not be like a, a, a secretarial work. It's rather more beyond, it's a thoughtful work. And Derby, you can easily check tenders and grants section here in which you, uh, 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 you will have a list of, uh, you get searchable by clients, by countries, by sectors, type of services, type of opportunity. Is the grant opportunity for non-governmental organizations or is it an individual opportunity or a tender opportunity, individual mean for experts and professional service providers on individual capacity, or a tender usually for consulting firms or for profit organizations and professional service providers. You can see a list of, of project opportunities from the European Union, from ex ex uh, 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 Expertise France, from the Embassy of Japan, to the European Union again, to the Refugee Council, Danish Refugee Council, to SPARC, which is an international organization, to USAID, to UNICEF, to UNHCR, and so on. All are classified and, and reliably searchable. You can also go and check organizations. To, you know, because many people find difficulty to contact organizations because they don't have the contact email address for real people. And they don't know which organization matches their uh, requirements. So in the, in, the, in the organizations that we have, we have classified them according to donor, grant making, to implementing partner, grant seeking. For instance, for donor agencies, you can see a list of, for instance, the Embassy of the Czech Republic, the UNRWA, the UNHCR, the USAID, the European Union, the Emirates Airline Foundation, which is a CSR, an Arab organization which called Saqiya Water. Okay. So, as a Delphi platform, uh, you can, you, it's, it has been built according to the uh, uh, philosophy of scout, engage, position, and capture, and it's, it gives the information necessary in your hand to be able to write thoughtful proposal. I think I have finished this presentation, this small presentation. So I would love if anyone have any question, please ask the question now in the chat area and I will answer it right now. So please write your questions. So for me to, to answer them in the chat area. Do you have any other, do you have qu any question? I can't see any question. <laughs> There's a question says from Daniel, what timeline should one give th themselves? Actually, usually the tight deadlines of requests for proposals are tight. The maximum, the maximum uh, I have seen in terms of deadline for submitting proposals is like 45 days to 60 days, and this is with large multi-million dollar projects of technical assistance. However, usually it's a one month, but but in terms of time, of terms of scouting, engaging, positioning, yeah, I think, and learning, the, learning about the clients, communicating with them, and then in, in, and you define the opportunity and then write the proposal, this can take you from six 
to 12 months before the procurement notice is publicly announced. Second question says, uh, second question says, uh, I was not able to follow in regards to finding grants, donors and sponsors. Do you have suggested links to track grants? Yes, of course. The Derby website has, every day, there are socioeconomic and political scientists, researchers who check every day and aggregate 550 plus websites in which we aggregate, identify, post, and classify tender opportunities, request for proposals, or grant opportunities, request for applications, in which you can track and start responding to. Is there as another, the third question, is there a certain format template for technical proposal that I should follow as an independent consultant moderator when applying for proposals? Yes, usually donor agencies usually have their own templates that you have to fill. Why? Because they don't want to have differentiating between, so they want to equalize what we can say the graphics and the good presentation proposals. So if the donor agency bring, provides you with a template that, that you need to you fill, you have to obey that template. The, the problem is what to write in the template. Even they are, all templates almost are similar. So what you have to write in the template, you have to show your client understanding, competition understanding, competitive comparative, thoughtful ideas, persuasive, all your winning themes. Usually, even if you don't have a template, there are main sections of a proposal document that should include. It should include executive summary. The second section is about your technical approach or methodology. The third section is your management approach and work plan. And the, the, the fourth section could be your performance monitoring plan or the KPIs, key performance indicators. These are major sections of any proposal requirements, of course, in addition to your management approach, organizational structure, key qualifications of personnel. Another question is, what's your advice for really new organizations trying to get donor funding who are not well known? Yeah. What should be their focus in the early days of fundraising? Interesting. Usually for a newly, newly entry people going in, they're, they're, they should have a thoughtful approach, a thoughtful mechanism written and delivered in a theory of change that if, the, if we do something, then this will happen. If we implement an act of learning, then Children are better critically thinkers, and then the economy is better in a good position. So you have to have your story to tell, prepared well, innovative, creative, and st start raise funds. Again, it's such a, 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 an idea. This is one thing if you have a great idea. The other way, which is if you don't have that much of good ideas or innovative ideas, you need to be a subcontractor. Start with subcontracting mechanisms with other brand contractors who know the inside business in these client organizations. We call it the insiders. Once you build this capacity and as a subcontractor, you will have a track record and you start compete later on. Then another question say, when we try approaching potential donors and thanks to the Derby database, how do you advise us to do it? Send them an introductory email? Yes. It's not introductory email. Emails should be written in a way that is, uh, to show, show that you're really concerned about the client and to show that you really understand the client. So emails has its own smart writing emails, which usually has, has, has three paragraphs starting with I, introducing yourself, which is the introduction, introductory email, introductory part that you just mentioned. And then we, during the meeting, what you will gain from the client and what the client will gain from you. 
like like a success story or a best practice that you have been through and you would like to introduce this to the donor where you think that the donor is planning or is doing similar projects so then the donor would like to listen to you and then and then this is what you call what the client will get out of the meeting meeting what in it for me uh, usually this kind of mechanism if it's if these emails are thoughtful and there is mutual benefit for both of you, you and them, uh, response rate is higher and positioning starts from this time, from the minute you send the email. Uh, another question says, if it's a new NGO and it doesn't have a long implementation history, how can it prove to the donor that they are qualified to undertake the project? I just mentioned this before, but here, as if it's NGO, you have to play, you have to show the expertise and the capacity of the board of trustees or the managing team capacity. This is, this is where they can see that you have the capacity to deliver and they can trust you. Uh, someone said, if you're gonna talk to the clients, Shall I send them an introductory email or shall I send them a concept paper with potential collaborations what they, that they would be interested in? Yes, you should, it's, it's not, you should not send a concept note. You should not reveal your ideas to the client from even before you are paid for. But you can show to the client that you are thoughtful and you have all the knowledge necessary for you to be their subcontractor and run their businesses. What percentage, another question, what percentage of turnover should be dedicated to business development? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, uh, not that much actually, it should be 5% maybe, or 7% maximum to business development activities, the cost. I mean, if you're not gonna have, for instance, a project of $1 million, you have to spend, to spend for it, like, uh, 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 not more than 5%, not more at all. Uh, projects like 20, I, I have seen project of a $20 million project, it costs the company, and 12 months before, until the proposal submission, 100,000 US dollars. So it's like 10%. It's like one uh, percent for each uh, uh, amount uh, that you are targeting to win and capture. Many RFPs, even from large donors, the, another question says, many RFPs, even from large donors and international NGOs, seem to have unrealistic deadlines. Please comment. Of course, this is I can't comment on that. It's uh, I understand that. Uh, I, I believe, I don't believe that uh, there is like a conspiracy and there, that they give it to someone uh, in their mind. So that's why they put a four or five days that someone is ready, who's going to prepare his proposal and then they just only would like to get uh, a list of three quotations so they can make it legitimate. I don't think this is the right the, the way, but I think procurement officers and the international organizers are late in uh, uh, putting their documents to the market, uh, uh, so they don't have I can procurement planning more, prob more, more most probably. Uh, but the, the, this is the, this this is in their yard. Uh, uh, to be able to combat or to overcome such deadlines is to engage with the client earlier, so you understand that they will in one day put this RFP into the market and you need to put your proposal in four days, but you know about it before. So this is one way in which you can uh, uh, mitigate tight deadlines. Other question, can you, oh, one minute please. Can you do a webinar about technical writing? Does and do not? Okay, it's a great idea. Yes, we can. Is there a specific number of slides should we, is there a specific number of slides should we follow? A number of slides? Um, not a certain number of slides, but there is usually minimum 
it is usually a maximum number of pages you have to prepare your proposal for. I always hear about donor intelligence data. How can I build such data? Donor intelligence data, how can you build that? Of course, you, it's a lot of reading here. You need to read the country development strategies. Usually it's a lot of reading. Uh, I think the best thing is to understand who have been partnering with the clients so you understand who are the ones they have worked with or have preferred to work with. From such names, you understand everything about the client, about their history. As well as check the archive of requests for proposals and requests for applications and you'll understand their funding priorities and needs and intelligent information. You need to connect with the client thoughtfully. Each request for proposal is written by a client officer. So if you review 10 requests for proposals for a specific client, as if you are reading the mind of 10 client officers, as if you have met with them, this is what you call business intelligence. Usually, donor, another question, usually donors have specific priorities. Yes, funding priorities. While needs on the ground are different, how can I convince a donor with a different approach based on needs? Uh, donors have their own uh, development strategy. This is based on what they think is are the needs are, or what their policies dictating them to follow. The issue is that, that you have to prove to bring in data with you, evidence data to show the need in the country and how solving such a need will ultimately, you need to convince them or to pursue, pursue them that such, uh, satisfying such a need will, at the end of the day, will bring benefits for the client and will make the client more, the donor agency satisfying its requirements. So it's, you flip the table. Instead of getting their needs, we bring our needs and try to have our needs matching with their priorities and strategic planning. Uh, I think this is, these are the, all the questions. The webinar is recorded. The webinar will be on our website in a couple of days, by the end of this week. Uh, it will be published on our website on Derby. We will send you, everyone will send you an, an email of the link so you can review and you can listen again to the question, to the, to the, to the slides and to the presentation. In any case, if you have any question about Derby platform, how can you grow your business or organization? through adopting or through having Derby as your companion, just contact us over the website, over our email, and one of our researchers, our business developers and proposal writers will follow up with you to, follow, to, 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 to show and demonstrate how this will able to consistently and profitably grow and sustain your organization. Uh, Growing organizations certainly will bring development aid effectiveness and the growth of all our countries, developing countries. So thank you so much for listening. Looking forward to seeing you in other webinars of Derby. All the best. Bye-bye.